Hello, and welcome to this short video, which will show you how inner orbit phenomena and questions can be used to assess student growth and mastery on NGSS performance expectations, also referred to in this video as PEs. Inner orbit is a site where you can find engaging, real world phenomena, accompanied by scaffolded questions that you can use to build any type of assessment you might need for your classroom. These assessments will provide you with detailed reporting so that you can adjust instruction, assess mastery of NGSS science standards, or prepare students for high stakes district or state science assessments. Today, we will dig into how one inner orbit phenomena can be used to assess NGSS performance expectation HSLS41. This is a high school, HS, life science, LS, performance expectation, and content related to this PE is often taught at the beginning of a unit about evolution. Students who demonstrate understanding of this PE will know specific DCI or disciplinary core idea content about the types of information that can provide evidence of common ancestry and evolution. They will also apply that knowledge by doing the SEP or science and engineering practice of communicating information in multiple formats. All of this happens through the lens of the CCC or cross-cutting concept, using patterns to establish causality and explain phenomena. These three dimensions of the PE come together, requiring students to communicate scientific information that common ancestry and biological evolution are supported by multiple lines of empirical evidence. Now that we're familiar with the performance expectation, let's take a look at how an inner orbit phenomenon can be used to assess it. Because our goal is to leverage phenomena to engage students in making sense of the world around them, rather than simply having them memorize facts or represent the knowledge they've already learned, it's best to select phenomena for assessments that you have not discussed in class. This ensures that students have opportunities to apply their learning to make sense of something new. But how can you as the teacher know that the phenomena you select to build assessments on inner orbit will accurately assess the performance expectation? Well, let's use the phenomenon how can we help Elsa put this platypus in its place as an example. Students are introduced to an evolutionary marvel that they may never have heard about before, the duckbill platypus. This animal is fascinating because it has fur and it's warm-blooded, but it also has webbed feet and a bill similar to that of many ducks. It also spends a great deal of its time in the water, and it lays eggs. Students will use and communicate information from embryological photographs, data tables, and phylogenetic trees to help a student, Elsa, establish the evolutionary history and classification of this amazing animal. Ultimately, we want students to answer complex free response questions, such as the one seen here, and complete rigorous tasks to determine if they've mastered the performance expectation. Let's break down a sense-making question from this phenomenon to help us get an even better understanding of how we can use this phenomenon to assess the performance expectation. This question asks students to evaluate and respond to a claim that the phylogenetic tree provided must be incorrect because patterns in the figure do not support the idea that the platypus is more closely related to mammals than aquatic birds. Students are also required to incorporate information about the types of evidence used to create phylogenetic trees, such as DNA, embryological, or anatomical features, and use evidence from the data table to support their response. But we know that students may struggle to answer rigorous three-dimensional questions like this for a number of reasons. This is why inner orbit breaks down the three dimensions of the NGSS to create questions that scaffold the student journey towards making sense of complex phenomena. Let's take a closer look. One-dimensional questions, called core content questions on the site, assess the DCI only. Again, this is the what scientists know dimension of the performance expectation. You can see here how question tagging in the teacher view on inner orbit provides information about what specific knowledge is being assessed by the question based on its alignment to the performance expectation. When we take a closer look at the prompt, which asks students to identify which of three conclusions can be supported by DNA evidence alone, we can see that they are primarily accessing their DCI content knowledge about the four different types of evidence of common ancestry in order to respond correctly. Two-dimensional questions require students to apply either the science practice or the cross-cutting concept in addition to their content knowledge to answer correctly. Here, the question adds a layer by now requiring students to reflect on how patterns observed on a phylogenetic tree can be used to draw conclusions about common ancestry and diversity. Lastly, three-dimensional questions require the use of content, practices, and concepts, whether they're multiple choice or free response. In this question, students are asked to evaluate the usefulness of the evidence in a data table, addressing that SEP of obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information, for determining the evolutionary relationship between organisms, hitting on the CCC of patterns, to finally confirm that the table alone is not sufficient evidence of these relationships because multiple types of empirical evidence are needed, finally touching on that DCI content knowledge. On inner orbit, you can find multiple phenomena for every NGSS performance expectation, 
and you can use the three question types we just discussed to build any type of assessment you want for your classroom. After you've assessed your students, you will have access to detailed three-dimensional data so that you know where your students are excelling and where they might be struggling. Thank you for joining us for this detailed walkthrough about how inner orbit phenomena can be used to assess NGSS performance expectations. Please reach out if you have any additional questions for our team.